Hey YouTube, this is Lost Texan uh, coming to you for that second part of the underbelly protection install. Uh, this time on this video we'll start off where I left off um, covering up the black and gray tanks and we'll continue all the way to the front of the trailer. Um, I did run into a little hiccup with the amount of material I had. Uh, I know I talked about maybe being able to do this with two 4x8s um, but obviously the math doesn't add up and I think that was when I was just going to do the tanks and not the whole length of the trailer. Um, I went ahead and decided to go the whole length of the trailer so I'm still waiting on that third piece but I ran up to Home Depot, bought a white uh, section, a 36 by 72 foot section and just painted it black so it can go in until I get that other panel in and then I'll replace that. But for now I need to get it done because I have a camping trip coming up this weekend. So I definitely wanted to get that done. Um, like before if you have any questions uh, please leave um, down in the comment section and I'll try to answer them the best I can. If you enjoy the video please like it and uh, alright let's get this going. Okay, so this is part two of that part one underbelly protection install and what I was doing here was that second part or that part that I had to cut off in uh, the first video this is me adding in an extra layer installation before I put it up in there. Um, I just felt like it needed it and I had it so I went ahead and installed it. Uh, now when I installed this uh, I kind of had a little trouble at first because at first I, I was going to uh, tuck the uh, propane lines in but then I realized that wasn't going to work out so um, you'll see where I screw this up in here and then later on you see me screw it back up in there. That was me adjusting it. Um, I just cut this out around the axle um, brackets and then got that up in there uh, pretty easily so this one wasn't too bad once I had everything cut out and they had to cut out for or those propane lines as well um, but once I got that done and then I was able to drill it up into the frame cross member so I went ahead and used that great stuff to fill in all the holes that I had to cut around the lines all right so here's the inside of that second section that I've done I just used that uh, that great stuff foam insulation and I just I kind of covered all the cracks and stuff just all the edges just so that kind of keeps that air out um, or you know keeps the cold air out keeps the critters out stuff like that just kind of did all the way like before once everything dried I went and I started to trim the outside of it and I'll later paint it once I have the whole trailer done also wanted to note um, if your trailer has a propane line that runs the length of it uh, if you'll look closely you'll see I un unbolted uh, all the uh, connections to it that are tying it to the frame um, just so that kind of gives it a little wiggle room for me to get that uh, core plast in there up underneath it and then then once I have that in there then I can secure the line all you know back up in into uh, the frame and that'll be additional support holding at least one side at least for my trailer uh, holding that core plus on top of uh, the additional uh, screws that I use at this point I was just making sure everything was out of the way for that core plus um, I loosened up some of the bolts on the stabilizer jacks but later on I would realize that I would need to completely remove them to make it fully accessible all right so I wanted to I know the camera's kind of angled but I want to talk to y'all about the uh, piping and how I kind of wrap that up um, right this right here it's uh, the that rubber uh, wrap that goes on most pipes like any water pipes or anything that you would use on your house exterior of your house that you want to protect during the winter and then I just took that uh, that white uh, outdoor all-weather tape and just fully taped those up those are my hot and cold drainage lines and then <sighs> You look up here this is a line going from the fresh water 
all the way to the uh, drain valve um, and then you, it's hard to see okay so now you can see a little bit better but uh, I took that same tubing I wrapped it around the line and the tape the best I could and then I got that going uh, all the way through up to into the uh, to the tank uh, it's only like one line I couldn't get so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of that spray foam and I'm just going to spray foam that all in so that will give it a little, a little bit more protection. It's usually an area I'm not going to be messing with and if I do need to mess with it means I got a leak so I might have to remove all that anyway. So, um, but I'm hoping that with all this insulation and stuff and this underbelly protection I won't have to worry about that. just so kind of keep everybody up to date what's going on is putting in this uh, panel uh, midpoint in this is the uh, closest frame like cross member to the uh, um, freshwater tank so I'm gonna go ahead and secure it there that way that just kind of keeps this little area um, blocked off you know it's it's not a Small, as small as the black and gray uh, tank area but still it'll just kind of help you know and what I'm going to do with this section is since it's just I don't really have anything on the other end I'm just going to do the whole length uh, with that one inch uh, foam with the uh, that R tech uh, sheet I'm going to do that the whole length here all the way and what I'm doing right here is how I did before where I took just a little strip of core plat core and uh, did one end. Well with this I'm just doing it kind of wrapping it around and taking both ends and just uh, securing them to the bottom. So it's holding it in on both sides even though it only needs it on one side. As you can see I'm getting my measurements so I can get everything cut out before I put that core plus up against the underbelly. As you can see, I've uh, laid my insulation down and I've cut all my grooves for my uh, trailer. Uh, all the wiring that comes through or the, like for this right here, this is for the stabilizer jacks. This is for the drainage for the water heater. Um, and then got down here, this is the drainage for the fresh water tank. Uh, right there is a uh, line that goes up into the trailer uh, from the uh, propane lines so just I'm gonna unhook that uh, slide that through there and then connect it back so you can just see but I'm gonna use this whole sheet 
um, to cover the front portion of the trailer and then this uh, that uh, reflect it uh, right here on the edge um, to cover that so it's still got some uh, insulation uh, there on the edge of it and real quick just uh, so everybody sees um, I put two layers of this uh, reflectic on this side um, I have a few low lines so I didn't want anything as high as that uh, star uh, the insula foam or or tech uh, so I want insulation but I wanted it to at least you know have a couple layers just like that one section of the trailer I did earlier but that should that should help all right as you can see I uh, took some of that spray foam and just sprayed in there where the piping was and it's hard to kind of get stuff wrapped around it so I just sprayed that in there and I'm going to touch it up again before I close this off. This all has to dry and then I can fill it in a little bit better. It's not pretty right now, but see there's a gap right there I got to fill. Almost hit the camera. You don't want that stuff touching and getting on anything because it is sticky. Note self, remove your uh, stabilizer jacks. It makes things so much easier. Now obviously I'm using up my stabilizer jacks. Also, as a j stabilizer jack to hold up the, uh, the underpinning, the underbelly protection. So take them off, that way you can put it on there. It's so much easier to get that long piece under there. And then you can turn around and use them to hold that piece up under there so real quick we'll look under it so you can kind of see what we got going on so I'm gonna secure that all up in there and then uh, this section will be done Alright, I just want to show it as of right now. It's uh, all pretty much done with this this front section except for right over there. Um, I gotta put in a few screws over there and then I'm gonna add a few more on this side even though I had that propane line uh, holding some most of it up but I want to add a few additional. And you'll see I put the foam there around the propane line that comes through and then I'll, uh, over there if you look uh, the two uh, drain valves from the water heater that uh, those right there I put foam around those and then I'm gonna put some over there on that drain valve as well from the freshwater tank and if you look up front I uh, put some around the wiring harness that goes to the battery um, but yeah, I just got to get a few more washers to do that side and then uh, put that stabilizer jack up and then 
the only section I have left is that uh, 32 inch by 5 foot section right there and then I will be done and pretty much that one will be pretty easy because I'll just slide that piece in secure those last that last bolt there that last nut there on the uh, propane line and just use the existing holes that I have and uh, obviously with this one I will um, tuck that piece in the back the back side of this I'll tuck it in here and then on that one it'll be on that side outside so it'll be a nice flow so when traveling down the highway there's not going to be anything catching um, that's the whole kind of goal of this is that front piece right there is tucked up in the frame and then the whole way down um, it's going to kind of step down but in the opposite direction of the the, the wind is traveling when uh, going down the highway so um, I've heard stories of people's uh, underbelly protection catching and it ripping uh, so I tried to incorporate that into installing this especially in sections I want to make sure that there's never a section that had access to the against the wind so it would pull it apart so hopefully that this will help um, and keep that up there for years to come but all right all right so you'll see this is that section it's a uh, 32 inch or well, 33 inches by uh, 60 inches I cut it when I bought it at Lowe's it's white as you can see um, but this is going to be my temporary until I get that other panel in and then I'll just cut that section and place it back up under there. Alright, let's get it installed. Once I had the piece all ready, I had to measure uh, the brackets for the axle and cut out accordingly. I went and got some tape so I could tape those two pieces that I'd used to hold that uh, insulation in the cross member, uh, tape those together.
here. All clogged up, so. So I just went around with some black spray paint and touched up all the areas that I uh, used that spray foam just so it wouldn't stick out as bad. Um, purely cosmetic, no other reason for it. I have the trailer completely done. Part two is finished. You can obviously see what section is not like the other ones, um, but it'll be replaced shortly. All right, well, that uh, concludes the video of the uh, install the underbelly protection. Um, obviously, I did it uh, my way. I took a lot of references from what the manufacturer uses, but I went with kind of the base, basic uh, installation that they uh, provide on some of the basic level trailers. Um, obviously, there are trailers out there that have some pretty high speed uh, insulation packages in the underbelly. Um, I was just going off a, a price point on a budget and what I'd seen that was usually put into a uh, basic tr level trailer. Um, obviously, you can go all out on this underbelly protection as far as the insulation and whatnot. A few pointers, uh, make sure you have all the tools that you think you may need, um, make sure you have all the materials, and remove as much as you can from the underbelly of that trailer. Uh, propane lines, uh, stabilizer jacks, um, some of it, I didn't realize that at the beginning of this video as you saw, um, but towards the end when I came up to the front I realized that the stabilizer jacks were going to have to be Learn from my mistakes, you know, I ventured into this, so definitely, you know, take take what you can from this. If you see improvements or ways to do it better, you know, by all means, add it and do it. You know, please put it in the comment section as well, like, hey, you know, I think maybe if you went this way, or I when I did it, I did it this way, and it seemed to be a little bit easier. Because people, you may not make a video, but people may watch this one and then read your comments and be like, oh, hey, that's a good idea. So please add any uh, suggestions that you may have. Um, like I've said before, if you have any questions, please ask. I'll try to fill in the comments. Uh, try to answer the comments as they come in. But, all right, y'all take care.